Hello. Hey. How's it going? Hello. Okay. Hey. There we go. Hello. Going well. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just multitasking. Didn't uh, realize I was logged on to Arthur's account. Oh well. <laughs> How are you doing, guys? Good. How are you? Uh, yeah, actually, I changed the the account name the other day because. I used it um, and I was logged in and I jumped into one of the um, other meetings and I was, um, I think I was actually named Tyler or something happened <laughs> and then I had to. Yeah, I think, well, I've used that a month ago or so, a month or so, maybe even a bit longer when I used it and I just, yeah, I like changed it in, in the account. But I didn't change it in the account, I just changed it when I used it. Yeah. How are you guys? I had first day back at work. Oh, wow. Congrats. First day back at work, brand new school, just early morning. Just lots, lot, you know, like any new job. It's just a lot. A lot to well, it's a good thing. You, you have a job, right? <laughs> so. yeah. I'm going to be getting paid, which is nice than, than not getting paid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Not really. It's just agency work, so it's really unstable stressful it it's something. just it's better than nothing yeah exactly but, but it, it's just weird to be back in like school environments but like mm -hmm. the whole covid thing is still like not resolved so it's just strange it's crazy it's because strange. Uh, strange. You know, some countries are actually getting into this second wave i mean if there if there was a, a first wave ever ending and it's it's quite crazy yeah, because, bringing back a second peak really more than out yeah and then the amount of tests is increasing uh who knows about the accuracy of the tests I but love. yeah kind of crazy all right we got some people in um i'll just uh start off with some organization uh, organizational stuff um and then we'll we'll jump into the the discussions on the team progress so one of the quick things we just got our notion a team account upgraded so that's good news we started accelerating on the uh, knowledge base organization but we kind of have multiple attempts at that uh, right now we have notion anton matan are leading this initiative and these experiments but we also have brian hill um, from Australia, who um, has a company that deals with Atlassian uh, at scale. He he has like a reselling. Um, he is a reselling partner of Atlassian products, I think. So he proposed um, another way of organizing knowledge base in Confluence and connecting that to Jira and to other pieces of it. Um, there's a lot of details on that, and I believe he shared a presentation with us. If anyone is is interested, um, Anton um, is probably the the best source of information on that topic. Um, so, kind of improving the knowledge organization, knowledge management, and figuring out what will stick. Um, so then we also kind of experimented last week was this work stream <coughs> session mechanic where me and Anton just decided to jump on a kind of the live stream Zoom call where we work on the newsletter, um, which was a fun way because we had some people join in and actually, you know, disrupt the workflow with uh, some other relevant uh, things. And we solved uh, those on a call. So it kind of felt like an uh, open office in a way in, in a Zoom uh, session. So that was cool. Um, I haven't managed to send out newsletter just because um, we haven't saved the, the first part of, of the newsletter and it, it got um, like canceled out by, the, by me um, getting into another uh, browser window, but it's recorded. So I plan to finish it up today and send it out. Also, lots of stuff has been happening. So kind of a, a very fat, long newsletter to, to come. Um, and I think, 
yeah, that that's it on my side of things. Uh, oh, also, we bought the. So as everyone is probably aware, we're kind of roadblocked on the bylaws to finish up our nonprofit application. So as a way to unblock us, I bought these templates for like $35 um, wow. that include bylaws and whatever uh, things that are required. Uh, I actually shared this with uh, Ogali and Anton. Um, not sure if you, Ogali, had um, some time to to work through them? Yes, I don't know if you've seen, I've made a lot of progress on it. Um, it's definitely been a lot easier just like plugging in, um, like plugging in info on the, on the template, but I have it open. Um, do you want to share your screen? Uh, yeah, how do I? It's easier to write with a skeleton, isn't it? Rather than having to build the whole thing. Um, do, do, do. Here's the okay bylaws. Um, okay, share my screen. Oh, it's oh, telling me that the host disabled the attendee. Um, ooh, swag! Yeah, check it out. So this is uh, this will also be shared in the newsletter update, but. Um, so we have Dr. Tayeb has, who has been helping us with literature review stuff and he has access to the manufacturing of the masks. So we prototyped these, um, ordered, I think, a couple hundred of those. They just arrived. And um, our quick idea is just to um, establish like a donation process through, through buying masks. And whoever wants to buy like five or 10 or um, whatever amount they want can support us. And so it doesn't feel weird um, to, to <laughs> ask for donations. But yeah, this should help paying for basic tools like Zoom, Zapier's, uh, buying templates and all kinds of small miscellaneous expenses. Yeah. All right, yeah, um, I think I enabled sharing of the screen. Uh, right, no? Let's see. Screen share is working. I can share. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do you, um, it's making me go through, oh, actually, wait, let's see. Maybe it's easy enough. Okay. I have to quit zoom in order for it to like zoom will not be able to record the content of your screen until it is quit. I don't know what that means. Got it. Um, Maybe uh, jump on a quick session after the daily call if you have time just to focus on the bylaws and whoever wants to participate can join in too. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Um, but yeah, basically the update is that uh, now that we have the template, it made it's made life a lot easier because you can just go in and like plug in the relevant information. And I've done that for the bylaws, um, as well as the articles of um, incorporation. Um, basically the whole list, there's like an entire folder of all the different documents we need um, for the like status application. Um, and I've just gone in and like added all the like relevant details that we have um, confirmed so far. Um, there's a bit that still needs to be like elaborated on, but for the most part, like the main details that we really need um, are plugged in, which is, which is great. So um, yeah, we can like go in more detail um, on that, but definitely feel, All right, let's feel do good it. about the progress that's been, that's been made. Sounds like a great update. I'm, I'm super excited about this part because that has been a, a huge blocker for me, both yeah. mentally and, you know, organizationally. So let's do it after the daily call in just like 20 minutes. Cool. Yeah. Um, so maybe let's jump. Uh, oh, one quick thing. So on the, the visual chart. Um, so Tyler, you mentioned that there is a, obviously besides the, you know, having time, there is an issue with us not being able to create visual just, chart because I just we, don't really have a lot of clarity right now. It's so 
I don't feel like I'm on the pulse with anything really. And I know I over no the news, is. I, I just, and I think that's part of it is I just like, I'm, I'm just like overwhelmed trying to, there's so much to try and hunt through, to try and work out who's doing what. And so few people are now making it public in the sense that like in public channels, this is what I've done, or this is the next step. So this is what I'm struggling with. So the bits that I can see, I can see people working on things, but it is just like little little things and it's really hard to find out who's kind of leading for lack of a better word and it's definitely not me i feel like i should be some places but i'm definitely not doing it. i just don't have the brain space for it right now there's a lot going on so i think for in order to push this task forward this is where this uh, streaming working streaming session would be helpful i mean i because I it's, it's not it's not people around yeah, it's not like one guy should be doing this because it's definitely hard to know wh where something's going on. Just two, three people. So we could start me, Tyler, maybe s somebody else. And then we just open it up and then see who will join and tell them, you know, what they do if they're not already on the chart and just have that type of thing. What do you think? Yeah, uh, let's do it in 45 minutes. Tyler, would that work for you? Yeah, I'm fine. I've got, I've, I'm, I'm tired, but I'm, I know I need to get things done. So yeah, honestly, just forcing my hand and making me do it, it's going to be way more effective than. All right. And then people can jump here. in whoever wants to, and we can hopefully um, get some structure accomplished. All right. So I'm sending you. And who knows, we could just build it on Notion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, well, they, they have some, uh, tools that you can, I mean, since Notion based on markup and for markup, there are a lot of like things to, to build diagrams, etc. Just, you need to know how to use those tools though. But uh, I think it, even that is doable. I, I think cool. you can use one of the slash commands to uh, start either a Miro or in one other kind of uh, mind mapping tool. If oh, memory nice. serves, I can, I yeah. can try and find that again now. I don't have any Miro slots on mine. Um, two of them are already Corona Y and one of them's mine. So I'm only allowed three free ones, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so let's jump into the, the progress sheet. Um, I think we have Sergey here on the call. Um, for anyone who haven't met Sergey before, he's actually leading the uh, team pulmonary fibrosis. Um, he's a computer vision engineer and web developer and he's the, the one pushing uh, the boundaries of the, the lung disease computer vision models. So uh, maybe we can have him give us a quick update. Serhi? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, we are moving, moving slowly. Not, many, not so many people interested uh, contributing right now, but at least few indicated they're interested. As one mentioned here, that the guys that I met with and at least they told me that they're interested in doing something. Uh, from my side, what I did is I downloaded this data from, so generally, just a few words, the idea is to build general sample supervised model and then train it on different tests. So while for building this model, I have downloaded the data from multiple huge data sets, uh, extracted this data and did some very basic EDA for this data. Uh, can share the screen. Uh, Go ahead. It's not much, but it's honest work. <laughs> mm. uh, basically, uh, the problem here is uh, data is stored in different format and with different uh, the values, basically different data range for the values stored, although it's all DCOM data of lungs. But uh, different, since data sources are different, I had to figure out how to move the this data to the same date range and the same distribution. So this is something that I think I did. And uh, the next step would be store the data after squeezing to like moving to the same distribution, storing this as a one big data set with all this data. And once I'm done with that, uh, I will start uh, training the network on this on big data in some supervised manner. And do we want to put that in one of our Google Cloud buckets or how do we want to, to store that? A Dataverse, as far as I know. Got it. The one we want to do right now is Dataverse. 
Anton, um, we're good. We're prepared. I think so. Oh, by the way, like we, we started the channel. So if you have any questions regarding Dataverse, please head to Slack Dataverse and just post, post it there. We have more eyeballs looking at that channel than to find anywhere people asking questions about them all over the Slack. Yeah. And when it comes to okay. the pulmonary stuff and the, um, have you reached out to the health lens people and seen if there's any crossover? With <laughs> These are connect? health lens people. All right. Yeah, it's the same. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, um, we had uh, Menashe, I think, yes. Um, he created this document that could be helpful for other people that want to understand um, the process. He kind of outlined the, the steps the, the pre-processing, localized detection, global detection, and he added some, some information and context to this, uh, which is in the, in the channel um, here, if, if you feel like um, exploring. Cool. cool. Thanks, uh, Sergey. Do, do you need mm -hmm. any sure. help with, with anything? No. All good. All right. Sounds good. So uh, next team, uh, time series, we have Isaac here. Hi, uh, so yeah, not too much updates. Uh, yeah, I was kind of, uh, I went hiking over the weekend, but uh, yeah, I'm getting back to stuff now. Um, so yeah, we're, we're pretty much, yeah, just working on incorporating the metadata uh, I did out. I did outline those issues we could use help with. I don't know if the link made it. I find editing the Excel hard, but I could send it on Slack too. If that's easier. Uh, go ahead. Okay. So yeah, I'll just send that there. Um, basically, I mean the main thing if someone could port, work on porting over one of the models, we have an issue for that. Um, that would be helpful because we need to pair, compare it to that baseline. And then the porting uh, from where to where? So there's an implementation of a number pi torch model. Um, that that was kind of kind of the, the current one of the current state of the art models on uh, forecasting at least on medical time series data, and we want to compare its performance on COVID. So we want to incorporate it into our framework, which requires just fat refactoring a couple things and stuff so um and then and then it will also be used for general use in our framework too so then now anyone could use it easily for anything in our framework but the current code is kind of very task specific so it will need to be refactored to a general class okay so from pytorch to to what um, and it will still be in pytorch each way but uh, the thing is the pytorch code we want to or incorporate to our flow forecast library, which like has the parameter hyper parameter sweeps and automated tuning and stuff. So in order to do that, we uh, a couple things need to be added and some of the code needs to be uh, modified to accept certain arguments. Got it. So porting PyTorch model to custom flow forecasting model. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Got it. And um, still working on the expanding the metadata, right? Yep, yep. I'm I'm primarily covering that right now, but yeah, I'm working on doing like a full sweep now to see how, if the metadata is improving performance, and if it isn't, you know, what uh, what ways could we better incorporate it to improve performance? Makes sense. Cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I have a quick I have a quick question to Isaac. Uh, so, like, do you guys rely on the history on your channel on Slack a lot or no? Um, the, do we rely on our, ch uh, like a Slack channel, channel as a, like, knowledge base or, like, information? Because the thing is, you guys are still in a private channel. And what I found it's hardest to, when I pick with people, especially who recently joined Corona Y, that... Oh, it turns out we have a team with time series who are working on time series because again, they obviously heard about it, but they, they don't know where to, to find information about it. And the only two places that I could point them out is one, obviously the GitHub repo. And it's great that there are like GitHub projects 
So essentially the Kanban project is over there. So you can see the activity there and start kind of looking who contributes and, you know, find the rest. Or the other place is manually add them to the private channel versus you just simply mention here is task time series and people could just search the channel on our Slack and join the public channel. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's worse for you, for your team to archive the private channel and kickstart the, the new public one. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that can make sense. Yeah, it would be good if there was a way of exporting our previous stuff. Um, I don't know if there's an easy way to do that. Because yeah, we have stuff, we do have stuff that like people occasionally search through on the private channel that goes all well, the way back to when we started in April. Well, things like you, you still keep, you don't delete the channel, right? But still like all of the new conversation you do on, on a public one. We did this for uh, times, uh, what the search engine team. We started with like private channel, then we use it, use it, but then at some point we realized, okay, there is no, there is zero benefits at all to keep doing private channel. And we just archive previous one, start all of the new conversation in, in the public channel. And then if, if you need to find something old one, you can still do it seamlessly in Slack because it searches for old channels at once when you search for. Uh, um, I don't Unless know if, I don't know if archiving is a good idea because I think when, when you archive a channel, it kicks everyone so, out of it. So here's what it I've been doing. I actually renamed the channel. And if you're cool with it, Isaac, uh, I'm just going to add the prefix archive and then create a, a public channel. Okay. Th this is what I was, what Arthur is yeah. just doing. This is what I mean by archive. And yeah, Just Tyler, labeling that, it as an archive, an old thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a good uh, catch, Tyler. Yeah, Isaac, don't, don't click archive because cool you'll kick everyone out of it and no one will be able to see it. A private channel yeah. archived is basically deleted. A public channel archived still is visible. You have to go looking for it, but it is visible. But yeah, don't click the archive yeah. button. It'll just Good it'll eradicate it. Um, Isaac, you're you're cool with that? Uh, yeah, yeah. We can we can move to public. Uh, I will just like announce on the current channel. We'll we'll, we'll move over and stuff just so people know, and then, yeah, and then we could, uh, yeah, just also, yeah, so long as we can still go and retrieve messages yeah. from the old one. Absolutely. If you, so, exactly, oh, if you stay in there, you, whenever you search, it'll still be there, or you can scroll do through we, it. Do you have somebody from Task with Demonology here? Oh, I don't, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, it would be great so, to do the same with, with them. Yes, because I know, like, these are two big channels. I know there are so much work is getting done there, but since they're private and then like people who are not familiar with anybody working there, they kind of think like, so what's going on? They only occasionally see the updates and then it kind of something weird happens culturally. Which, with this stuff. which team was that? The second one you were uh, talking about then? So task VT immunology. So it's Alex. Oh, Alex the immunology Chara. team. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I know. I know exactly. That's one of them channels I'm not in but I know it exists. <laughs> Probably it's worth to also rebrand them as immunology team, task immunology or something, because this task VT, like it's a long uh, historic name that probably useless now. Because there is also task VT contradictory claims and I've been fortunate to be added to it last week after hearing that there is Whoa. some major progress. You got, you, got, and... you, got, you got brought into the fold. Wow, <laughs> yeah. special and fucking is... privileges. <laughs> there's good stuff in there honestly um so i i agree we should try to to move uh, the teams into public channels if if they're not opposed to it um by any reason and uh yeah i mean dan sosa malavica other people i think even matan is is helping them with that um so really great stuff happening there yeah i think like yeah, the, think the rule of thumb when when to go public channel is when you already have this more or less structured base, knowledge base, you know? So when you have structure of a team, when people kind of uh, like get into your channel somehow, right? Either they wanted to do it or just simply exploring, they kind of get a good sense and idea like who to ask for like, oh, I want to contribute. Who should you call on yeah. Who asked you? you? You got me today. No, his, his mic's gone funny. Um, 
yeah, I think it's I think that's a good measuring point is is when you've got a core team of people working on a problem and you've kind of formulated how you're gonna move forward with that problem, then when someone joins in, they're gonna have a better idea where you can put them rather than if you're just kicking around ideas, I can makes perfect sense to have a private channel just to like kick around ideas. But when you get to a point where you're formulated and you start to make traction, then unless there's something proprietary in there, there's no reason it should be private for me. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into the next team, team COVID questions. Uh, we kind of hit a, a, a sluggish progress on there, but maybe Matan, um, you have an update. Uh, I saw that we uploaded questions to Dakana. Do we? Hey, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we got, um, we got a new instance of Takano running and uh, I got their um, comrades, uh, two of their data sets uploaded. Uh, one was that more remote raw file, uh, which, al which also seemed to have um, uh, target classes. Um, so several different labels. And then the other one was the questions. So that one is a question and answer. And uh, yeah, we get back to that, that, uh, that whole thing. Well, <laughs> how do we go about uh, answering answering these questions. So, um, I mean, last time I think we, we talked about that was that f was a first brainstorming session. I, I probably missed a few conversations. Um, but yeah, that's like, the, that's the, the very start of, of, um, a very large new project, um, that, uh, I'm trying to remember now when that last call was, that was a while ago. I think yeah. the questions uh, I one could probably, I think the questions one could probably link up to what, um, the society library team we've been talking to. We had a call with what last week. Yeah, about. we had an amazing call. Yeah, and week. I'm trying. I'm still trying to work out how to make a bridge channel, which is confusing because I don't know how to do it. I've got her email address and I've got the 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 Slack that it needs to link to. I don't know how to do it. Though. I can't work it out. Maybe it's because I'm not I an mean, owner. Maybe it's only an owner thing. I can just. I'll just send you information I've got. All right. Sounds I, good. I don't know. I'm not sure what the advantage is to having so many differences. Um, yeah, I have no clue check. either. I was wondering about this because uh, we have deliverable to get the um, questions in, in the Kano. And I see that Trita posted a link, but when I go to the link, it just shows 404. Mm. Um, I mean, I can, I can send you mine and see right now and see what happens. Um, Anton, do you have any idea? The, can you guys pose this one into the Kana channel? Again, another support channel for our backend services. Sure. Arthur, can you do the do screenshot? That. Or the whole link? All right, then. Um, okay. Done. I'm opening yours, and I'm redirected to login. Um, Quickly sign up. Okay. So I guess I so I have a different instance that you haven't signed up for yet. Um, yeah. So, so I have a quick thing. This is a labs instance, right? Because it's the kind of labs run away. Those are not production ready Takano instances. No, I, and Matan, you got right the proper one. Something something dot Dakana dot right? Yeah. So I named it yeah, I, so, I had I had him name it um name it literature review. So it's uh it's without the labs. It's literature review dot the Okay. So yeah, I just so signed is, up. Is, uh, um I should receive an email, right? Uh, probably not. I'm gonna. I've, I've got admin rights. I'm gonna add you right now. Okay. Oh, did you just sign up as AK? Yep. No. Cool. 
Would you have to try now if you enter the password? Uh, yeah, it, it says your username and password didn't match. Oh, By the way, I'm having such an apocalyptic uh, sun today because of all the um, fires. Not sure if you can see, but it's so orange. It's like you're in a Blade Runner movie. Fire is bad for him. Yeah, it's extreme heat. It's like 45 Celsius. Pretty, it's pretty hot, yeah. It's not to be messed with. Yeah. Mm. I'm right. basically not watching news at the moment, so some, unless something's really jumps up into my psyche, I just don't know it anymore. My brain. Yeah, it's it. crazy, like bubonic plague and all kinds of things. I just, I'm, I'm just more or less fil I'm filtering the world right now. I'm just not, not, not dealing with it. I feel you. Yeah. Um, all right. So maybe my town will we can figure out uh, that one later on but great progress we we have the kind of you're an admin so i feel like there, there will be much faster progress on that side of things um let's see who else we have here uh we don't have anyone from the task vt stuff so maybe we'll reach out to them uh to see what's the latest we had brian hill do tremendous work was putting up the the confluence infrastructure for team COVID misinformation so hopefully some good stuff will, will start happening there. Uh, we have the introduction to uh, National Press Foundation that will uh, be sent out sometime this week was that one pager. And uh, yeah, I think we're good. So unless anyone else has any questions or updates, I'll wrap uh, this one up and I'll send a link for, uh, for the next one uh, to focus on the bylaws and uh, figuring out the nonprofit situation. So Gally, Anton, I'll send you the link. Um, Tyler, do you want to join yeah, that? Yeah, one? just drop, yeah, drop it in and put it in the policy channel as well because that way at least there's some thread of when shit's happened. Cool, all right. Yes. Sounds good, thanks guys. See you in five guys. Bye-bye.